Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about simple harmonic motion. To begin with, let's take a look at our objectives. First off, we want to sketch and analyze a graph of displacement as a function of time for an object in simple harmonic motion. Then we'll write down an appropriate expression for displacement of the form a sine omega t or a cosine omega t to describe the motion. We want to find an expression for velocity and acceleration as a function of time. State and apply the relationship between frequency and period. And finally, we'll look at the general differential equation form of simple harmonic motion. d squared x over dt squared, the second derivative of x with respect to time, is equal to negative omega squared x, where omega is the angular frequency. All right, let's take a look and see what we can do here. First off, simple harmonic motion. Why is it important? Well, simple harmonic motion really is nature's response to any sort of disturbance or perturbance. Nature tends to, f you see lots of examples of simple harmonic motion in na nature. Take a tree branch, pull it down, and watch it vibrate back and forth. It's a damped simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion by definition is motion in which a restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement of the object. So the bigger the displacement, you have a linear relationship with that force. A good way to think about this is to look at the analogy to circular motion. Here we have an object moving in a circle with a rotational velocity omega. It's at angle theta from the horizontal. Its amplitude is a. So our position vector r would be the magnitude of that vector a times the cosine of theta for the x component and a sine theta for the y component. Now right underneath this, we have this uh, mass on a spring, on a horizontal spring. And if this has a spring constant, a k, where f equals minus kx, it's a restoring force, you would see this oscillate back and forth. Now what's really interesting is if you were to watch this go around the circle and compare that to the x motion of this moving back and forth on a spring as you pull it to one side and let it go, you would find that they follow the same motion. The x component would be exactly the same. That's where simple harmonic motion has a nice analogy to circular motion. And if r equals a cosine theta, a sine theta, it's not too much of a stretch to look at this and say, well, we know that the angular velocity or the angular frequency is going to be the derivative of theta with respect to time, our angular frequency equation. Therefore, we could separate these to say that omega dt equals d theta. And if we integrate both sides from some initial time, t equals zero, to t, and some initial angle, theta equals zero, to some final angle, theta. What we'll find then, since omega is constant, that crosses the integral sign, we end up with omega t equal to theta. Theta equals omega t. That's going to be useful here in a couple minutes. If we go analyze this spring, we know that the force, which is equal to mass times acceleration, is going to be equal to minus kx by Hooke's law. But this acceleration is equal to the second derivative of x with respect to time. So we could rewrite this to say that m d squared x over dt squared, the second derivative of x with respect to time, equals minus kx. Or rearranging once more, we could write this as d squared x over dt squared plus k over m, x equals zero. There's a second order differential equation. We've got the variable x, its second derivative, and we have x in the same equation. We're going to very shortly find the solution to this. What function has a second derivative that when you add that to a constant times that function itself can give you zero? That's got to be a sine or a cosine function. So the general form of the solution would be to say that x is a function of time is going to be equal to a times the cosine of omega t, where omega in this case is going to be the square root of k over m. And that's one, the solution we get by guessing, by thinking about what works. Plugging that back into the equation is a great exercise to go see if you plug a cosine omega t back into this equation, does it work out? And you should find that you get zero.
Great. Let's take a look and go a little bit further with this. Position, velocity, and acceleration. If we know that theta equals omega t, and we also know that our x is equal to a cos theta, then we started with x of t equals a cosine omega t. How would we get the velocity then? Well, remember, velocity is just the derivative of x with respect to t. So if I take the first derivative of that, I have a, a constant. Derivative of the cosine is the opposite of the sine, opposite of the sine of omega t, times the derivative of omega t. So I've got to have an omega in here. So that becomes minus omega a sine omega t. Or the acceleration is just the derivative of velocity, or the second derivative of the position function. So acceleration is dv dt, or d squared x dt squared. So the derivative of the velocity minus omega a, those are constants. Derivative of the sine is the cosine, so I get minus omega a cosine omega t. And I have to take the derivative of my argument here, omega t. That's going to be omega. So I've got another omega in there, minus omega squared cosine omega t. So now we have position, velocity, and acceleration. And if you take a look here, what's the maximum value you can have for the cosine? That's got to be 1. So the maximum x must be just that constant a. Down here, the maximum value of the sine is also 1. So the maximum value of velocity, v max, must be minus omega a. And in similar fashion, the maximum value of acceleration, since the maximum value of the cosine is just 1, the maximum acceleration must be omega squared a. And I suppose I could get rid of the negative sign there since we're really just talking about magnitudes position, velocity, and acceleration of an object in simple harmonic motion. Now, as we talk about these, it's going to be useful to talk about frequency and period again. Frequency is the number of cycles or revolutions per second. Its units are 1 over seconds, and we call those hertz. Or period is the time for one complete cycle or one complete revolution, and its units are seconds. And you can relate these together using the formula t equals 1 over f, or if you prefer, frequency equals 1 over the period. Now this is going to relate very closely to what we call angular frequency. That's the number of radians per second. And that's going to correspond to the angular velocity for an object traveling in uniform circular motion as well. Now omega is 2 pi times the frequency or 2 pi over the period. So if you wanted the period as well, you could write period is equal to 2 pi over omega. So as we solve simple harmonic motion problems, if we want to know the period, the time for one cycle, 2 pi divided by the angular frequency. We just have to figure out what the angular frequency is going to be. So the general form for simple harmonic motion, a second derivative of a position function with respect to time plus some value squared omega squared times x equals 0. The second derivative of something plus a constant times that something itself that gives you 0. And that's going to lead you to cosine and sine functions. So the general solution is always going to be of the form x of t equals a cosine omega t plus phi, a phase angle, which means just where on that cosine curve you're going to start. And since cosine and sine curves are offset, depending on that phase angle, you could actually write this as a sine function as well. You're just going to change your variables in here a little bit. So you have a sinusoidal or a cosinusoidal function that is the solution for these general forms of simple harmonic motion. And when you do this, of course, this omega squared is going to correspond to the omega down here. Now let's take a look at the energy of simple harmonic motion. When an object undergoes simple harmonic motion, the kinetic and potential energy both vary with time, although the total energy remains constant, assuming you don't have any damping. You're not losing any energy to non-conservative forces. So if we take a look here, if total energy remains constant, well, let's see what we could get for the kinetic energy and the potential energy. 
If I start with the potential energy, we could do that by remembering that the work done is going to be the integral from some value x back to the equilibrium position of f of x dotted with dx. Or in this case, that'll be the integral from 0 to x of minus kx dx, which we've done this before. We're deriving the potential energy in a spring, actually, is minus kx squared over 2 from x to 0, or the potential energy in a spring is 1 half kx squared. So if we look at the position function, x of t equals a cos omega t, well, if that's the case, then if we go back to our potential energy in a spring, that's going to be 1 half times k, and I'm going to replace x squared with a cos omega t squared. Or with a little bit of rearrangement, I can show then that our potential energy in a spring is going to be 1 half k times our constant a squared times the square of the cosine of omega t. All right, let's take and now look at the kinetic energy side. We know that the velocity as a function of time is dx dt. And we already proved that that's minus omega a sine omega t. But potential energy, pardon me, kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So in this case, that's going to be 1 half m. And our velocity squared will we'll have minus omega a sine squared omega t. Or if I expand that out, that's going to be our kinetic energy equal to 1 half m omega squared times a squared times the square of the sine of omega t. But remember, in our form of the solution, we have omega equals square root of k over m, or omega squared equals k over m. So I can replace omega squared with k over m to find that my kinetic energy is actually equal to 1 half times k times a squared sine squared omega t. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace kinetic energy over here with 1 half k a squared sine squared omega t. And I'm going to replace the potential energy with 1 half k a squared cosine squared omega t. When I do that, my total energy is going to be 1 half k a squared sine squared omega t, again, my value for kinetic energy, plus 1 half k a squared square of the cosine of omega t from over here. A little bit of algebra, I can pull the 1 half k a squared out of both sides to say that the energy is 1 half k a squared times the sine squared of omega t plus cosine squared of omega t. Now, if we go back to our trig identities, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So my total energy then must be 1 half k a squared. And that should make sense. It's a constant anywhere, not a function of time whatsoever. When you have the spring for a mass on a spring completely extended, it's all potential energy. 1 half k x squared is your a equal to a. As it goes back through the zero point, it becomes the equilibrium point, it becomes all kinetic energy. Then it keeps going to the other side, potential energy again, and back and forth in this oscillatory manner. That's simple harmonic motion. Oftentimes, you'll see this put together in a graph form where they'll show you a graph of potential energy versus x. And typically, the graph of motion like this would look something like that, where you have the highest potential energy at the furthest x, and you have zero potential energy when you're at equilibrium position. 
but here while you're at equilibrium, all of your energy is kinetic energy. So if you think about this in terms of having a constant total energy, any energy, any area, any height, I should say, down below that green line, well, this is going to be your potential energy of your system. And up here, let's find a color that'll show up. That is going to be your kinetic energy as your object goes back and forth in this oscillating manner. Energy of simple harmonic motion. All right, hopefully that gets you started with simple harmonic motion. If you need more help or are looking for more examples, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.